Get in the Ring connects startups to opportunities to start, grow, and scale up their business. The reason I said yes to this one was because we were coming to the home of Philips and going to spend the day with the Philips executives. All these entrepreneurs that have great energy, they have great tools, and they all want to change the world. Gentlemen, welcome to Get in the Ring. Welcome again to Osaka for the seventh Get in the Ring. This is Get in the Ring Osaka 2023. Yay. Woo. All right. Now, our theme for this time is health tech. And from a spectacular group of people and companies that have applied, we have six amazing finalists that will battle that out here tonight. Now, as COVID continues to be part of our lives, we are using again the power of technology to welcome contestants from around the world to battle online. My name is Nathan Bryan, and again, I am pleased to be your Osaka Japan Get in the Ring Master. Now, this is our seventh time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is our seventh time to hold Get in the Ring in the fabulous city of Osaka, and I'm happy to welcome you all to another wonderful evening of getting to know some fantastic people, their ideas, the companies that they're creating, and how they hope to change the world of health tech. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Get in the Ring, it was started in 2012 in the Netherlands, and with more and more countries becoming involved, it grows each and every year. The Get in the Ring Foundation is an organization that provides the most fun and effective way for startups and innovators to create impact and to get noticed. Now here's how a Get in the Ring event works. First, the startups will get into this boxing ring and actually they'll be doing virtually via our setups here. And they will pitch, defend, and do their utmost to prove that they are the best. Tonight, they will battle here in this ring for you. To the victors goes the prize a chance to gain recognition and connect with you and with our amazing sponsors. In each battle, they'll be giving a short intro and then they'll pitch five rounds and complete for a spot in the Get in the Ring global meetup next summer. Now, each Get in the Ring is made possible through the generous support of our fantastic sponsors. For making tonight's Get in the Ring Osaka 2023 possible, we'd like to thank AstraZeneca. EY Japan, <laughs> Fujitsu Accelerator, and also a big round of applause for our host organization, the Osaka Innovation Hub, again, for hosting this wonderful event. Now, for tonight's battles, we've been having three different weight classes, and these are based upon the valuation of the various companies that have applied. We have a lightweight class, a middleweight class, and then a heavyweight class. There will be two contestants for each of the classes. Now in each battle, they'll be starting off with a one minute intro and then they'll have five rounds of 30 seconds each. In the round one, they're gonna be talking about their team. Now this is where they can talk about the members, the skills, experience, diversity, why their team is awesome, and why they think they will succeed. In round two, this is where they talk about achievements. And now this is not what they want to achieve, but what they have achieved up to now, what they've gotten done. Have they created prototypes? Do they have sales, a customer base, patents, prizes, awards? What have they actually been able to do up until now? And round three, they're gonna be talking about their business model and market. This is their strategy. What unique success points do they have? Markets that they're looking at, how they'll get market share, and how they're gonna create revenue to move into the future. And round four, they're gonna be talking about their financials and their proposition. What do they need to succeed? 
What type of ROI might they be offering? Shares or do they have a three to five year financial plan? What does the bottom line look like? And then round five. This is the freestyle round. It's the most interesting, I think. This is where they can really talk about, they can really be creative, talk about the passion of their company. What is at their core? They can also talk about why they think their company might be better than the other company. So it's free to do whatever they want to talk about. Again, 30 seconds for each of these five rounds. And we have three battles tonight in this format. Now to introduce our wonderful judges who will be helping decide the winners for this evening. And this really is one of the most difficult things to do because we have so many fantastic companies. I'd like to introduce first the head of startup APAC, startup programs APAC, Rainmaking Innovation Japan, Mr. Brian Lim. Hey Brian, how are you doing this evening? Very good, thank you. All right. I'd like to ask you, what are you looking for in a winner tonight? Absolutely. Besides continuing the proud tradition of companies representing Osaka and representing Japan in the Get In The Ring finals, it's really about companies that are able to solve common global problems with their technologies. And I firmly believe that companies originating from Japan should look to go global from day one. And yep. we have, I think, six wonderful companies here today looking to do exactly that. All right, great. So solving global problems, and this is health tech, so solving global health problems based from Japan coming out to the world. All right, great. Now, in your experience with working with many different companies, what were some of the things that you thought were the toughest to overcome over the years? Absolutely. I think one of the key areas that I've observed is really around finding the right product market fit and going to, whenever you go to a new market, you have to refine that product market fit. And this is something that I think all companies should definitely take note of when they're thinking of expanding globally. Okay, so as you're mentioning, global is what you're looking for, but with each global market, it has its own problems and challenges. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Next, we've got partner at Next Blue, Miss Kanako Inoue. <laughs> Welcome. Kanako, how are you doing tonight? Great, I'm very excited. All right, great. So, now what are you looking for in a winner tonight? Um, I am looking for a bull entrepreneur that is out to change people's life, especially because this is um, health tech. And also, same as Brian, um, I'm really looking forward to Japanese companies competing on a global scale. All right, great. So changing the world through health, changing people's health, and also looking at the world as a whole globe, okay? And what are some of the things that you've noticed that companies have had the most difficulty with in growing? Um, I think for healthcare, uh, it's very difficult to monetize. Mm. So um, finding the right business model and um, finding the right partner and also um, finding the right business model is probably the key. Okay, so business models and partners as they try to grow. Okay, thank you very much. And then the CEO of Kavaria, Miss Haruka Hashimoto. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so I'm going to ask you as well. So what are you looking for in a winner tonight on this stage? Yes, well, I'm looking forward, yes, yes, knowing the story of the company's business. Uh, today's thing in the hair stick is what I have been working on for many years and I know that the needs of the patients or customers in the healthcare sector are diverse. So I believe there must be some need that your technology can be applied to. So in order to grow your technology as a business, I'm looking forward to know your story or scenario on how your technology can fulfill the needs. Okay, so, so knowing what, what is at their core, their passion, why did they say, oh, this is what needs to be done, where, what is the story of their company? All right, great. And as you've worked with various companies over the years, what do you see to be the most difficult and toughest thing that they've had to over, overcome? Yes, this is, a, is such a difficult question, but I think the three key elements of business is team and product and money. So of those, I think team is the hardest to get. So to get a great team member, high salary or stock option can be a value, but I think the essential thing to build a strong team is that whether the CEO can confess to the members what he or she is not good at, not only the passion, but also the weakness of the CEO. This is the essential point to build a strong, trustworthy, and self-driven team, I think. So. 
Okay, so the company really comes down to the team. And again, you're coming back to the story. So if the CEO has a great story and can pull people in, they're gonna build a great team and a great company. All right, you guys have your work cut out for you because we've got a lot of great companies here tonight. Okay, so is everybody ready to get in the ring? Yeah, okay. Now, our first battle for this evening will be a battle of our lightweight class. So let's now welcome the startups who are ready to get in the ring. In our red corner, from Smart Tissues, Miss Denise Jusur. Yay! Hello. Hey Denise, how are you doing? I'm great. All right, are you, are you ready to battle it out here? Yes, sir. Okay, great, all right. And in our blue corner, from Osaka Heat Cool, Mr. Kenzo Ibano. All right. Hey, Kenzo, how you doing? Great, thanks. Okay, oh, I love the logo as well, the Heat Cool. You've got the fire and the ice going as well. All right, cool. All right, now, as we uh, normally do, and you probably know, we usually do a junk in here, but when we do have a man versus a woman battling, we do like to be ladies first. So I'm going to start <laughs> off with you, Denise, okay? All right, again, we're gonna be starting with our introduction, and then we're gonna go into our five battle rounds. So, you have one minute to tell us all about Smart Tissues, okay? Okay. All right, are you ready? Go! Hello, my name is Denise Suhur. I'm a co-founder of Smart Tissues, and today I would like to explain why and how we print life. Bioprinting has the potential to become one of the most powerful tools in the healthcare industry. However, the lack of suitable biomaterials for printing living cells hinders the possibility of treating many patients. Therefore, here at the Smart Tissues, we develop a biomaterial with a unique combination of mechanical and biological properties. Today, we can print a small pieces of tissues to test drugs and reduce animal experiments. But our final goal and commitment to humanity is to produce fully functional organs and tissues so no more patients will die on waiting lists. Thank you. All right. I think you're under time. Very good. Amazing. All right. Great, 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 great. So let me see. Okay. There's the bell. So. Way under time. Okay, so you're actually printing tissues, is what you're saying, right? All right, you're doing samples right now, but you hope to be able eventually to print full organs as well, working organs. That sounds like some amazing, very interesting uh, technology there. Okay, all right, I'm going to come back to you, Kenzo, okay? You're going to tell me all about Heat Cool and why Osaka Heat Cool is so wonderful, okay? Ready? Okay, go! Osaka Heat Cool is solving the pain of itching. Itching is sometimes underestimated, however it is a serious pain. There is more than 300 million people suffering severe itching due to the eczema or other skin diseases. The worst problem of itching, once you scratch it, you will get skin damage. And this damage will accelerate the itching. We need to stop itchy scratchy cycle. For that purpose, we created Sunscratch. This device much better gives you scratching-like stimulations without skin damage. What we do is quite simple. We apply heat and cool at the same time. Your skin gets confused, you will feel flickering, which overcomes the itching. There is already the itchy remover using only heat. However, our device provides both heating and cooling, which actually works better for your skin. Thank you very much. All right, right on the bell. Okay. So let me get this right. So you have a device that when you're when you're, you feel an itch and you want to scratch, it provides heat and cool, and your skin's like, okay, I don't know, but I'm not itchy anymore. All right, okay, and that helps yeah. for people that you know have itching diseases, things like that. Mosquito bites as well. Yeah. Oh wow, amazing. Okay, all right, great. So I'm actually going to stay with you, Kenzo, because I want to hear about this amazing team that you have uh that has created this heat cool device okay so you've got 30 seconds to tell us about your team going into round one ready go osaka heat cool is originally five university professors including me there are the experts in thermal material circuit haptics and interface currently we are focusing on the haptics and trying to solve the pain of itching 
but ultimately we will have the senses to remove the, all the pain humankind feels. In combining our state of art knowledge, we will provide unique solutions for the people's pain. Okay, all right. So you have a team of many professors, yourself included, and they've got a various uh, range of backgrounds um, for creating the device. Okay, sounds like you've got a pretty good team. All right, I'm going to come back to you now, Denise, talking about smart tissues and your team over there. Okay, ready, go. Okay, so we are a diverse team of four people from Japan and overseas, combining expertise in the fields of business, science, and engineering. In particular, I have professional experience working in R&D and business divisions of pharmaceutical and medical devices companies, uh, which allow me to understand the needs of this industry and lead the team. We have been uh, successfully working together for four for years already and have all capabilities to take this business okay. to the next level. All right, great. So you have a, a mixed team of international as well as Japanese and many people with a medical background that's enabling you to break into this market. All right, very good. I'm going to stick with you, Denise, as we go into our second round for achievements, okay? Now, again, this is talking about what you've already achieved to date, okay? Ready? Go! So we have been awarded multiple times in acceleration programs and with other prestigious uh, grants in Japan and overseas. Uh, we also have established collaboration with major universities and our commitment to this project allow us to develop uh, the first antibacterial bioink for printing living human cells for which we are currently submitting a patent. And I should mention that we achieve all of this independently and without company dilution. All right, great, right at the bell. So you already have lots of awards and you're working with different medical companies as well to have the product ready, okay? All right, coming back to you, Kenzo, to tell us about the achievements of Osaka Heat Cool. Ready, go! We successfully patented basic technologies and created four versions of the prototypes. The latest version of the prototypes is manufacturing ladies. We successfully created 30 units and tested to the more than 1,000 users. And about 80% of them gave us the positive feedback. And also, we are correcting the waiting list and more than 100 users already registered through our website and waiting for our product to be released. Thank you. Okay, again, right on the bell. So you already have several products that you've put into, that you've created, some prototypes. You have over 1,000 users, you said, and 80% of them have come back and said that it's really helping them out plus a waiting list of people that want to try the device. All right, that sounds, that sounds pretty good, okay. All right, Denise, I'm gonna come back to you now with the business model and market. Tell us about where do you see the market for smart tissues. Ready, go! Our business model is simple. The BioInc is a consumable product and you can think about it as a paper to a printer, so we need to use it every time we need to print. Therefore, we can constantly supply our BioInc to our customers. We aim to do that in a B2B approach by partnering with bioprinter suppliers or directly to our customers in academia, pharma, by taking advantage of our scientific network. Okay, way under the bell. So you're like Printer Inc. You're always continuously buying Printer Inc. So you see that the market will always be continuing. You'll always need the Bio Inc. the more and more you want to print. Okay, all right, great. Okay, Kenzo, tell us about the business model market you vision for Osaka Heat Cool. Ready, go! The market of eczemas and skin disease is $14 billion and quite expanding. And the market of electric itchy re remover is currently $200 million. And we will take this market and expand it through our innovative technologies. We will sell our product with a multiple channel at the same time, we will provide apps to personalize their, these devices. These apps will keep some, giving us some small revenues and keep them keep us connected to the end user. Okay, so as you're saying, the model, the market is really everybody has an itch to scratch. So you have all these places and, and many different ways. And you're thinking about apps as well to help move it forward. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to stay with you and hear about the financials and the proposition that you have for Osaka Heat Cool. Okay, ready? Go! So far, our, our main budget is non dilutions, no equities. We got $0.4 million from the government R&D funding. Now we need private funding for the $1 million US dollars to the private manufacturing 
and uh, small um, medical testing and uh, medical regulation confirmations. And now, with this budget, we can really make to produce of some scratch and deliver it to the customers in the worldwide. Okay, so you already have some funding, but you, and you just applied for a million US, and you're gonna use that to create more products, okay? All right, Denise, coming back to you to hear about the financials and proposition that you have. Ready, go! So we are raising 1 million USD to achieve two major milestones, which are launch our product to immediately re uh, generate revenue in the R&D field, and second, establish the first bioprinting facility in Japan so, so we can provide services around bioprinting technology and advance to the clinical applications of our BioInc. Okay, so you got the money that's coming in. Waiting for the bell. All right, that's gonna be able to allow you to establish printing here in Japan already. All right, great. So going into our fifth round, the freestyle round, again, you can talk about anything that you want. You'll have 30 seconds. I'm gonna let Denise wrap up. So we're gonna start off with you, Kenzo, okay? Ready, go! Itching and scratching are universal problem. During our development, we got many encouraged uh, opinions from the people. We really need to deliver our device to the global market. And with this event and the global meetup will be the excellent opportunity for us. We cannot cure the skin diseases by ourselves, but we can at least give the peace of mind for the people suffering severe itching. Thank you so much. Okay, great, right at the bell. Okay, so again, you're talking about something that affects a lot of people and some worse than others, and you're offering them relief. Okay, great, all right. So freestyle round here, 30 seconds, whatever you want to talk about, Denise. Ready, go! So our Bio Inc. is relevant not only to drug testing and research, but for the future of the medicine, in which we will we'll be able to save a million of patients waiting for organs. Our technology has enormous potential and we are pioneers in Japan. We, we, um, with this investment, we are looking for uh, to estimate, we estimate that in five years, we can commercialize this for human transplantation. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, let's bring life together. Okay, wow, so you're thinking about, you know, all the people that are waiting for transplants. If you're able to print them, you're able to provide that need and then really help save lives, okay. Again, it sounds like two very, very incredible companies with some amazing technology that is really gonna change the field of health tech, okay? Let's give them a big round of applause. All right, this is gonna be hard for our judges. All right, so let's go. Brian, Kanega Haruka, what questions do you have for our amazing contestants here? Can I? Sure, Haruka. I have a question to Dennis, smart issues. So uh, I have two questions, one in the science, one is about the other is about bi uh, business model, the science. Uh, what is the composition of of this bioing? Does it contain cells and scaffolding materials such as collagen? Yeah, actually, collagen is one of the materials that have been, uh, that are currently in the market. Uh, however, there are some limitations using these materials about the temp temperature of printing. Uh, and also the resolution of the printing. Uh, it has very good compatibility, but it doesn't match the mechanical properties for uh, using it as a bio ink. So uh, there are several uh, materials in the market, but none of them has both mechanical and biological properties. And uh, in addition, our bio ink is antibacterial, which is also a key uh, characteristic for clinical applications. Thank you. Another question about business model. I understand that you currently provide your bioink for R&D at academia and pharmaceutical companies, but uh, do you, uh, does your company bioprint the specified order tissue at your company and deliver the finished cellular tissue under the bacterial transfer agreement to your customer? What is your business model to protect your patents? Uh, well, we are uh, now about to submit our, our patent. Um, of course, we have signed material transfer agreement and non-disclosure agreement to the collaborators that we are working with at this moment, uh, which are located in academia. Um, I'm not sure if I got right to your question. Yeah, thank you. Ah, okay. Okay, great. All right. Brian, Kanako, other questions that you have for our two contestants? 
Yes, thank you. I have two questions uh, for Ibano-san and then one question for Denise. Um, so for my two questions for Ibano-san, uh, the first question is, um, you mentioned testing it with 1,000, more than 1,000 users and also have uh, a long waiting list. Can I please understand the distribution of these uh, users? Are they mainly in Japan or are they worldwide? So that's the first question. Uh, second question is more around the market size. Uh, you mentioned a 14 billion market and then you mentioned each relief is around 200 million. Uh, could you help me understand the market dynamics there uh, a bit further, please? Um, okay. And my, my question for Denise is, uh, you mentioned consumables uh, as, your, uh, as your supply to bioprinters and R&D centers. What's the average retail price currently uh, in uh, for, for bio ink uh, for globally? Okay, all right. So while you're thinking about Denise, let's let Kenzo answer the first two questions, okay? Okay, uh, so the, for the thousand user sharing it was done by the, uh, Japan, of course, and Australia, and in United States too. And then currently, one of our members in Germany and taking some surveys for it. So it is quite quite global. And the second question was uh, the market size. So there is a fourteen billion dollars for the examiners, but that ex uh, including the medicines, and a two hundred million for the itchy relief, itchy removers. So it is based on the there's uh, heating itchy removers as the competitors, and then they are selling hundred uh, hundred thousand pieces each year, and that's cr about corresponding two hundred million dollars. Okay, so there are already competitive products out there, and they already have a very large marketplace. So, but they only provide heat relief. Okay, yeah. all right. So now Denise. Yes, uh, well, uh, the product we are selling uh, is sold in uh, very small quantities uh, in terms of milligrams or in liquid form. It's like two or three milliliters cartridge. And this is uh, the, the, the market price is around 200, 300 uh, dollars, USD dollars per uh, vial for every five milliliters. Okay. Thank you. All right, okay. All right, and let's see, uh, Kanako questions that you have for our two contestants. Thank you. Um, I have two questions for Osaka Hiko and one question for Smart Tissue. Um, so going first with Smart Tissue, um, can you uh, explain a little bit about um, a Smart Tissue? Uh, yeah, um, a little bit about the roadmap and where are you in that roadmap? Um, what is your development plan? and the road to um, launching the product. Um, for Osaka Hiko, I have um, two questions. One is, um, what is your customer acquisition plan? And the other one is, um, although your team is very um, experienced in the ac academic background, um, I feel that um, you are lacking a little bit of diversity um, around like business and the other functions. How are you um, planning to compensate that? Okay, all right. So Denise, let's start with you um, with the question. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so about, about the roadmap. Uh, so the first um, thing we want to do is to start commercializing our product for R&D, as I explained before. Uh, that will allow us to also generate data because usually these products are um, the scientists when use this kind of products they publish paper papers uh, scientific uh, research so we can uh, dig more into the applications of the bioings we do know some applications uh, for uh, a couple of tissues but we believe that uh, in the r d stage if we supply the material to our customers we can also discover other a type of tissues that we can treat with the same uh, biomaterial. In addition, uh, the same material, the nature of the material, material allow for chemical modifications. So we can actually adapt to a different kind of tissues. So the idea is to generate uh, or to customize with using this base material to accommodate it for several type of tissues. For now, we have uh, complete the research in skeletal tissues such as cartilage and bone. And also we have a bit of research in skin tissues. 
So that's our uh, main uh, roadmap for, for the first five years. And after that, we want to start commercializing this for clinical applications because still there is no uh, clear regulations yet. So we are waiting also for uh, during that time um, we can uh, clarify uh, better the clinical roadmap. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, coming back to you, Kenzo, talking about your group, your team. Thank you so much. Uh, and the uh, teams and customer acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, aiming to the customers for eczemas and people with eczemas having a good communities already. And we will approach these communities through the apps and uh, mic through the micro influencers. They are collecting many information as possible and we are reaching these customers uh, through these micro influencers. And for the teams, uh, Yes, you are correct. The, our team is currently lacking some diversities. However, uh, we are having some uh, market uh, professional from the MBA taking, she is taking MBA and she's a can Canadian. And also we are taking some international team members too. And also for the business side, uh, we actually have another member in the Germany. Uh, she is very good for the business development. and. Uh, Currently, we are still in the main, mainly in the academic side because we are kind of free workforce and we don't have salary to pay. But uh, as we in get investments, we can hire the pe people, more people to grow our business. Okay, all right, great. Very good, very good. Now we're going to give our judges a little bit of time to think about who is going to be the winner, okay, for our first, our lightweight round here. This is going to be a really, really tough one. So while the judges are thinking, and think about who they're gonna vote for. Again, congratulations to both of you. Some fantastic technology. Now, Denise, I hear you're printing skin as well. You were saying? Yes. Okay, so Kenzo, you need to test some skin, right? So I don't know, yeah. I, I can hear a tie up there somewhere, okay? All right, very good, very good. Um, and also then, so bone as well as cartilage, you can print? Okay, so, because in a lot of scientific movies, they have, you know, people are printed and things like that. So this is what you're kind of looking at, being able to print the different parts and skins and, yeah, but now we print just a small pieces just so small piece. for fundamental research and also for drug testing. Okay, all right, good. All right, and Kenzo, you had the device there with uh, the heat and cool. It looked to be quite large, yes. Um, do you have, is there a reason why it's that size? Do, can you make it smaller or does it need to be that big for the, the technological um, parts that are inside of it? Uh, we can make it smaller and we make it slightly larger just because uh, it holds quite well. If it's too small, uh, it's not comfortable to hold. Oh, okay, okay. So it's actually that's the uh, you've you've done some field testing and you found that that is actually the best size to actually hold for using and applying and things like that. Okay. Yeah. All exactly. right. Okay. And you can use that anywhere on the body in terms of what about like places that have hair and things like that, like on your head, if you've got a scratch up there. Uh, the hairy part is kind of quite challenging right now. We have the better function for the bare skin. Okay, it mainly works on bare skin. All right, okay, all right, very good. Okay, I think we're coming back. Our judges, I think we have, um, they're ready. They're getting ready, okay. All right, so we're gonna start off with our votes here, starting off with Brian. Do you have your vote ready? Yes, I have my vote ready. Okay, who do you think should be the winner of our first round tonight at Get In The Ring Osaka 2023? My vote is for Red. Red, okay, smart for smart tissues, okay. And why did you pick smart tissues? Why do you think that they are the, the company that's going to succeed better? Yeah, it was a really close one, by the way, uh, after looking at all five rounds. Uh, smart tissues aged it. Um, I think what's really interesting is um, around the uh, potential for the first bioprinting facility in Japan. I think that's going to be... Uh, utilizing or increasing the utilization of the consumables, the bio-ink, even further. So that's really interesting for me. Uh, and I think the theme in terms of the balance between business, science, engineering, I think that's really strong as well. Um, so these are some of the reasons why I've chosen them. Okay, so you think Smart Dish has, has more of a balance right now. And then, but as you know, Kenzo was saying, they're working on bringing in more people to back up their sales department as well. Okay, all right, so we've got one vote for Smart Tissue for the red red side, okay, or red corner. Kanako, do you have your vote ready? Yes, I do. Okay, so uh, who do you think should be the winner for this first round? 
I vote for blue. Blue. Okay, so a vote for Osaka Heat and Cool. All right. So, what made you uh, decide this way? Um, it was a really difficult decision, and I think my decision will change um, depending on the timeline. Um, so, I really like Smart Tissue because it has really big impact um, to the world, and as Brian said, it's very interesting. But um, when I asked about the roadmap, I felt that the roadmap was very vague, and the concept was really good, but I feel that the, the um, plan was still not there. Um, so there's, there needs to be more um, work involved. And on the other hand, um, Osaka Heat Cool, um, I think the feasibility is higher, and they have a concrete idea as to how to distribute um, their products. And also they have, a, um, although right now they don't have diversity in their team, they already have identified people who, want, who they want to, part, um, to hire as a team. So um, I voted for uh, Blue. Okay, so you're thinking about the feasibility right now to market. You think Heat Cool is, Osaka Heat Cool is, is on their way a little bit closer, whereas Smart Tissues, they still have to work on their roadmap, but still amazing technology, okay? Haruka, no pressure here, <laughs> no pressure here, but your vote will decide our first round, okay? So do you have your vote ready? Yes, I have. Okay, so who do you think should be our winner, or who do you think will be our winner for this round? Yes, I vote for Fred. Smart tissue, okay, all right. Okay, and what, what made uh, you have that decision? What, what were your points? Yes, yes, this is such a difficult decision, and yeah, the both companies doing a great job, the group, uh, doing a great product, but uh, Smart Tissue, I think it has a strong team. It, the company has scientists and also business members who have the experience of strategic partnership with pharmaceutical companies or others. And also, it can be the technology can be applied to several markets. So this is also in line with global trends since the since and animal testing is being discouraged as much as possible even in drug discovery and cosmetic development. This is why I chose Smart Tissue. Okay, all right, thank you. So we have our first winner for the night, Denise with Smart Tissues. Congratulations! Yay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, this is close again, two very, very good companies. And Kenzo, if you need any tissue samples to do tests on, I can hook you up with a company that has a great way to print them out for you, okay? All right, so let's give a big round of applause for our two lightweight contestants. Okay, uh, and coming back, so Denise, give me some words. So how do you feel? <laughs> so excited. Thank you so much for your votes. Uh, yeah, we really appreciate that. And uh, well, I'm sorry, I, maybe I got a bit nervous about the roadmap, but we do have a clear uh, roadmap, but still we'll keep working on that. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, I have the opportunity to work with amazing people in our team. And I think this is uh, one of the key that we have been uh, succeeding in several uh, ways and aspects. So we will keep doing our best okay. to deliver this technology. Great. Thank okay. So Looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah, seeing what, what types of things can be printed out in the future. Okay. All right. Congratulations again. Okay. Another big round of applause for our two lightweight contestants. Okay, now it's time for our second battle of this evening. We're going into our middleweight class. Now let's welcome the startups who are, gonna about, who are about to get in the ring. In our blue corner we have, from InnoPace, Mr. Munemasa Sugimoto. And in our red corner, from Liquid Mind, we have Mr. Shinsuke Koide. Yay! Okay. All right. Welcome to our second round here. Are you two ready to battle it out? Yes, I do. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Okay. I'm ready. All right. So we're going to be starting off to decide who goes first, uh, Osaka Junkin style. Okay. So if I can see your hands in the air, okay. We've got Sai Showagu 
Ja n k e n p o i Well, not with me, but actually. Oh. Oh, I think we've got over Eno Pace. Okay, yes. I think we do have a winner here. Munimasan is going to be going first. Okay, all right. So, welcome you here tonight. Again, we're going to be starting off with our introduction. You have one minute to tell us about your company and your business. Okay? Ready? Go! Eno Pace is a medical device startup company to develop implantable neural modulation. Neuromodulation is a clinically proven treatment device which delivers electrical stimulation to modulate nerve activity to treat many kinds of diseases. Currently, we are developing two neuromodulations for treatment of overactive bladder and epilepsy. Can you imagine if you cannot go out if you have frequent urinary leakage? Can you imagine if you cannot walk because you are suffering from? Frequent epileptic seizures. So, only in Japan, there are more than 10 million overactive b l a d d e r and 1 million epilepsy patients. So, we use our unique wireless power and closed loop technology to advance neuromodulation to serve those patients for better quality of life. Thank you very much. Okay. Right on the mark. Okay, so you have technology that's helping people with an overactive bladder or people with epilepsy have a fuller life and able to get out. Okay, all right. Sounds like some amazing technology. Okay, coming over to you, Shunsuke. Tell us about Liquid Mind. You have one minute、okay. for your introduction.、Okay. Ready? Go! Hi, my name is Shunsuke Koide. I'm CEO of Liquid Mind. Our technology can change the global leukemia testing environment. That there is no minimal investment and no precise test for leukemia. So, leukemia is a cancer of the blood.、Uh, globally, there are 470,000 new cases and 310,000 deaths a year. It's a fatal disease that prevents normal blood production and is caused by genetic mutations. The risk of the death from、uh, recurrence is、uh, 70%. There are early detection for、uh, leukemia recurrence is very important. But doctors have not been able to pinpoint exactly which gene is at fault. And a patient has must be a bone marrow aspiration testing every time since the diagnosis. It's very painful. Our technology can identify the positive gene associated with the leukemia. This makes it possible to switch to the blood test and provide a more precise test. Thank you very much. Okay, wow, very good. So, Basically, you have a, you, you're working on a test that is able to earlier detect leukemia and that's not as invasive, not as painful. Okay? All right, very good. All right, I'm going to stay with you, Shinsuke, to hear about the team behind Liquid Mind, okay? You've got 30 seconds to tell us about your members. Ready? Go! We are originating from the Institute of Medical Science at the University of Tokyo.、Oh, we have、uh, seven members, all of them specialized experiments in the genetic analysis industry. Mr. Dr. Yokohama is a hematologist at the Dupar on the、uh, program. Other is a MD and a pathology lecturer. One excellent regulatory affairs,、uh, two laboratory technicians.、Uh, CEO has expected a、um, GM a genetic company. I have an MBA, sales,、uh, sales expression、uh, in rare disease、uh, pharmaceutical company.、Thank、okay.、You. All right, very good. So you have, it sounds like you have doctors, you have genetic. Genolysis, as well as MBA people, okay? A very, very strong staff over there, okay? All right, Munimasa, I'm coming over to find out about your team here at InnoPass. Ready? Go! First,、uh, three board members, including myself, have strong e- expertise of healthcare business and biomedical engineering. Second, we are partnering with a total of five Japanese universities, including the University of Tokyo and Tokyo Institute of Technology, to leverage their leading expertise. Third, we have strong international partners currently in Taiwan and Germany for product and clinical development. Thank you. Okay, all right, very good. So you have ties with the universities, lots of doctors, as well as international as well. And I think you both, it sounds like, are connected to the University of Tokyo. So, very, very strong team. team. Okay, all right, I'm going to stay with you, Minimasa, and find out about the achievements. What have you done till now? Okay, ready? Go! Since we founded our company in 2021, we have been selected two national projects by Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, called MN. So, those projects allowed us to complete a working prototype 
and com complete the validation of a concept by animal study to confirm that our miniaturized device can achieve personalized treatment in combination of nerve activity sensing and timely optimum stimulation. Okay, all right, so you've already got prototypes working and you're on your way to, to you've been working with people as well, okay? All right, coming back to you, Shinsuke. What has Liquid Mine achieved until now? Ready? Go! Our service has already launched in Japan for research purposes. Sales of $15,000 into the last year. Unit prices are $4,000. We have concluded a joint research agreement in the University of Tokyo and already obtained four patents for our technologies and non-clinical trials have already started this year. We already have contact with other 50% of hematology department in Japan uh, for concept of model evaluation. Most of them have a technology. Okay, all right, so you have patents already. Um, you've got a lot of connections and things are ready to roll, okay? All right, now I want to hear about the business model and the market that you see it. Okay, I'm going to stay with you, Shinsuke, for Liquid Mine, okay? Ready, go! We track a uh, cancer genetic fragment into the blood, for genome sequencing a uh, leukemia specimen, and identify the causative gene using a technology. Design regions collecting corresponding to the causative gene. Bone marrow testing can be switched to our laboratory uh, liquid biopsy. The leukemia drug market is expected to reach seven, $17 billion by 2024. A new case increased by 104% worldwide. It's also growing in Japan. Okay, so it's a disease that's growing. It has a huge, you say, $17 million market um, value that, that with people in need, okay? All right, I'm going to come back to you, Munimasa, to tell us about the Inopase business model and market. Ready? Go! Our business model can leverage existing reimbursement price, which is around $10,000 to $15,000 US dollars. So we sell our device to hospitals, and the hospital can get reimbursed. The neural modulation market is expected to grow very strongly at more than 12% annual growth rate. Our target market will exceed 5 billion US dollars globally in the next five years. Thank you. Okay, all right. So it's already you already have a market that's there and it's growing five billion dollars in the next five years, okay? All right, let's hear about the financials and the proposition that you have, okay? I'm gonna stay over here with you, Munimasa, with InnoPass, okay? Ready? Go! On top of one million US dollar grant, uh, we recently closed a seed investment from two Japanese investors to strengthen our capability for next series A lab. So we are looking for around 3 million US dollars in early 2024 to drive our product development. So we plan to invite international investors at the next series A lab, so we have started networking with investors in Europe. Thank you. Okay, so you're looking at your next Series A round for 2024, looking for $3 million, okay? All right, coming back to you, Shinsuke, with Liquid Mine. Financials and proposition. Ready? Go! We have completed the second fundraising at the stage of last year for, from our home, four investors. Uh, we are planning to write Series A of $4 million uh, for the additional non clinical trials and overseas market research. So we, uh, so this year, uh, we plan to start our free medical treatment and non-clinical trials. Data uh, collected from uh, analysis, 100 samples. Continue to increase uh, by research analysis, and uh, to, in 2026, start of insurance. Okay, all right, so $4 million, and you're already starting trials and stuff around the world, okay? All right. Going into our fifth round, okay, this is, again, our freestyle round. You can talk about anything you want. Talk about your company, talk about the other person's company. I'm going to stick with you over here, Shinsuke, Liquid Mine. You've got 30 seconds to freestyle. Ready? Go! Leukemia patients around the world are waiting for a painless liquid biopsy test. So do pediatric patients. We are making a software as a medical device for leukemia recurrence module. We have a more con a contributor to a leukemia treatment a diversion of technology. For example, transplant decision and early screening. Anyway, uh, for the patient, uh, we will do our best. Thank you very much. Okay, under the bell. All right, so really thinking about the patients with leukemia and the, the growing market, the more people that are out there and how you can help them, okay? All right, 
Gonna wrap this up, so Munimasa, ready to freestyle, go! Europe is a very important market for us. So historically, the Europe has been mature to accept the high-class advanced medical technology. So we plan to start first human clinical trial in Europe in 2026. So this Get In The Ring is a perfect opportunity for us to expand our network with investors, clinical business partners located in Europe to drive up activity for product launch. Thank you. All right. Underdog again, and very nice of you to mention getting the ring, okay, of course. Out of the Netherlands, this is a way to get you into the European market. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, two very, very good companies. This is going to be really, really difficult on our judges. But to help them decide, let's go into our question and answer section. Okay, all right. Brian Kanako Haruka, who has some questions for our two contestants? Sure, I can start. Okay. Um, so I have a question around the monetization and the financial projection. So especially um, for Liquid Mind, um, I think you haven't really elaborated on the monetization scheme. So can you explain a little bit on how you are planning to monetize um, as well as um, kind of explain to us the financial projection for the next five years, which is both for Liquid Mind and InnoPace. Okay, all right, so let's talk with Liquid Mind. Um, so, financial projections next five years. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I ask you, uh, ask you uh, 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 at first, our unit price is uh, uh, 7,000 per patient. And uh, uh, at first, the so, uh, domestic uh, market, and the second is overseas. It's uh, already have uh, 145 uh, doctors are uh, needed. In needed, uh, we have a, a chance to uh, domestic uh, market. Okay, all right. And coming over to Munimasa with Inobans. Okay, talking about your five-year kind of plan with the financials. Sure. So the uh, about the business model, as I mentioned, uh, we. We can leverage the existing reimbursement price, which is around 10,000 to 15,000 US dollars. So basically, the, we can sell our device around roughly 8,000 or 10,000 US dollars to make money. And in next five years uh, planning, so the we so we, we we have two development projects. One is the sacral neural modulation for overactive bladder, and another one the brain neural modulation for epilepsy. So that we started earlier the sacral neural modulation one, and we plan to get the product launch in Europe in 2028, and uh, in 2030 the Japan US company. So the our sales projection is around 300 million US dollar top line sales in in five years after the launch. Okay, all right, all right, very good. So a lot, you're looking really far into the future. Okay, I heard 2028, 2030. Okay, launches in Europe and launches in this in, in Japan as well. Okay, all right, Brian, Haruka, some questions. Okay, can I can I ask some questions? Yes, go ahead. Yes, well, one question for Innoface, one question for Rapid Mind. Uh, the for Innoface, uh, is, is a product is something like that can treat disease, or is this something that can be implanted for a few years or a lifelong time to control the outbreak of, of the di disease? Which one is it? Okay. Is what yeah. Okay. Let him answer that. Okay. Is it yeah something that controls or something that implants to detect? Sure, so our device is actually a combination of the implantable device, which is a permanent use, a permanent implant, and also the wearable device to control the whole system. And of course, uh, our device can achieve the treatment purpose, but what we are aiming for is that timely close loop the personal treatment can cure the disease by recovering the function of the nerve activity. So what we are looking for is to completely cure the disease. Okay, so looking at implant plus a wearable device and looking to cure the diseases, okay? All right. And your question over here for Liquid Mind then? Liquid Mind for Liquid Mind. How, yes. I'd like to know more about your science. How does the technology differ from the conventional method of genome analysis from blood samples? Uh, what Wait. is your unique point of your technology? Okay. 
Uh, our technology is uh, uh, named by uh, Yokomo, is a gene filter system for the cancer of the blood. Uh, now we are uh, focused on leukemia, uh, and uh, uh, Yokomo program is uh, possible to narrow down positive gene and uh, from a uh, huge amount of mutation. Oh, uh, the different forms of uh, causative gene can be identified uh, individually from uh, whole genome analysis. Uh, the, the compared with uh, panel testing, can only add or, or address a limited number of the causative gene. Thank you. Is the technology is applicable to other than other other diseases than leukemia? Other diseases? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, at first, uh, we are looking at a patient. Okay, so first leukemia, but it could then be used for other diseases as well. Okay, all right. Okay, and Brian, questions? Yep, I have one question for InnoPace and one question for Liquid Mind. Uh, my first question for InnoPace would be, um, I understand that for neuromodulation, the two diseases that you just spoke about are just two of many potential uh, use cases for neuromodulation. Could you expand a bit more in terms of other potential use cases and what would the potential market size for this be, um, if you are able to build that out? Uh, my question for Liquid Mind is, I think you mentioned during your freestyle round as well that you were developing some software. Um, would, would like you to elaborate further on that, please. Uh, thank you. Okay, so, so first, Munimasa with InnoPace. Uh, thank you very much for your question. That this is exactly what we are planning to expand our pipeline development for the new indications. And uh, so we are thinking that we could apply our technology for the pain control, pain management. And also that we can think of the post-stroke, the paralysis, the recovery. And uh, all of our neuromodulation market will be more than 10 billion US dollar markets, so that we have more upside opportunity. All right, okay. And then liquid mining, you talked about some software. Could okay. you elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. Uh, we are making a whole uh, software as a medical uh, device. And uh, just like a uh, uh, clinician is uh, into the hospital uh, desktop in the uh, report, our, uh, we, have, we are reported to the uh, gene mutations. And uh, uh, we need, need to uh, uh, non clinical trials and clinical studies approval in uh, 2025. And uh, uh, clinical trials a uh, uh, study of 100 cases per year. And uh, data, collecting data from approval. Okay, all right. Again, this is going to be, I think, very difficult. Let's give a big round of applause for our two middleweight class contestants. Yay! All right, all right, all right. Okay, now let's give our judges a little bit of time to think about who they think will be the winner for our middle class contest here for Get in the Ring Osaka 2023. Okay, thank you both very much. Wow, some amazing technology with a lot of use for helping people uh, in the future, detecting leukemia, um, making it a lot more less evasive, making it easier um, and less painful. Um, and then you know, helping people get all along with their life with both, you're talking about bladder control, as well as for people with epileptic, so uh, some type of pick up of the brain waves, I guess. Pick up with that as well, okay? So helping them regain their life or have a more healthy uh, and more fulfilling life, okay? All right, so let's go out to our judges here. We're gonna be starting off this round with Kanako. Do you have your vote ready? Yes, I can't find the paper. Um, yes, I do. Yes, okay, all right. So who do you think should be our winner for this middleweight round? Really, really difficult, but let's see your vote. I vote for InnoPace. InnoPace, okay, congratulations. One vote for InnoPace, all right. And what made you uh, decide InnoPace? Um, so the pain that they are trying to solve are both like real pain that the patients have. And so I think that both solutions will create tremendous impact on the patient's uh, quality of life. Um, I chose InnoPace because I felt that I was more convinced that um, Munema Sasan will be able to pull this off. And also, I really like the fact that he is focused on the European market because that's where we invest. <laughs> okay, all right. So you've got a little bit there. You're investing in Europe, so this is one of your things. Okay. All right. Haruka, do you have your vote ready? Yes. 
I have. <laughs> okay, so who do you think should be our middle class winner this evening? Yes, I vote for Red. Okay, for Liquid Mine. Okay, all right. So again, we've got one and one. Okay, and what uh, made you uh, decide in this way? Yes, yes, it's truly a difficult decision. Yes, of course, uh, Innovates have a really innovative technology. I believe it. So, but why I chose Liquid Mine is they are tackling with unmet metal needs. They already have a, un they already have a revenue. Um, there will be a lot of difficulties before starting selling the product, but the needs of testing new camera are very clear, and I believe they can. Yes, I believe Regan Mike can monetize properly by partnering with the right company. Okay. All right. So you're already seeing the monet the monetization and the value that they're providing. All right. Okay, Brian. This one's gonna be up to you. Do you have your vote ready? Yes, no pressure at all. But no I pressure at all. I said, yeah, no pressure. So, who is our winner for the second round here, our middleweight class? My vote is for Blue for Innovates. For Blue Innovates, okay. Ooh, all right. Congratulations, congratulations. Okay. All right, so what affected your vote? Why did you think this way, Brian? Yeah, I think there was a very clear articulation of the strategy and the vision um, being European based and also I think the potential uh, market size uh, for this solution is, is huge as well. And, and besides that, I think a very clear um, team strength and also potential solutions to start off with in terms of the diseases and the use cases and expanding to more in the future as well. So I really like that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So again, you're seeing the European market and as they're burning out. Okay, all right. So, Unimasa with Innobase, congratulations! Yay! Our winner for the second round tonight. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, I feel very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am very happy to, 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 to continue getting the link support to, uh, for the market access to the Europe. That's very important for our growth. Okay, fantastic. All right. So again, with getting the ring, yes, based out of Europe, and you're going to be able to continue on with that. Okay, let's give a big round of applause for both of our contestants here for our middleweight class. Yay! All right. Okay, and now for our final battle for this evening. Get ready for the battle of our heavyweight class. Let's welcome the startups who are about to get in the ring. Yay! Woo! Okay. All right, now over here in our blue corner from Cogsmart is Mr. Akira Higuchi. Yay! Okay, and over in our red corner, from Magic Shields is Mr. Hiroshi Shimomura! Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, are you guys ready to battle it out here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, all right. And, and as I, I, people are really working on their Zoom backgrounds as well. It's, it's not really just the battle of minds, it's also the battle of the backgrounds, it seems. Okay, great backgrounds, guys, okay? All right, again, to decide who gets to go first, we're gonna do it. Japanese junkin style here, okay? So we're gonna start off. Let's see this fist. Okay, Sai Showagu, a junkin point. Okay, it looks like we've got Akin over here. It's Pa Beats Goo. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna start off tonight. You have one minute to tell us about Cog Smart and what it is, okay? All right, ready? Go! Hi, I'm Akira Higuchi, CEO of Cog Smart. We are a university spin out company. Our mission is to achieve lifelong healthy brain for dementia prevention with the power of software. We focus on the hippocampus. Hippocampus starts to atrophy from around 40 years old. It's atrophy depending on how good or bad your lifestyle is. Alzheimer's disease patient shows very small hippocampus. You may wonder where this hippocampus is. Here is mine. Our service brain seat uses AI to measure its volume out of MR images. In my case, the volume is 6,650 cubic millimeters. In addition, my volume ranks 91 out of 100 people out of the same generation. This means I'm in the bottom 10%, namely mine has got atrophied seriously. 
uh, due to my bad lifestyle. But no worries, hippocampus may get bigger with lifestyle improvement thanks to a phenomenon called neurogenesis. Today I'll win the final and want to show our service to the world along with how we can manage to make my small hippocampus bigger. Okay, all right, great, great. Hippocampus, not a word that you hear every day. Okay, I see that you've got, and you even have your own scores up here. So 91%. I think you need to change your lifestyle a little bit there, Akira. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> but as you said, you can rebuild it, okay? You can rebuild it. All right, very, very good. Okay? All right, Hiroshi, you've got one minute to introduce and tell us all about Magic Shields. Ready? Go! Hi, I'm Hiroshi, the CEO of Magic Sales Inc. Uh, we have developed mechanical metamaterials to prevent fractures caused by falls in the elderly. Falling fractures are increasing rapidly around the world and uh, as cause of dementia and long-term care conditions. And so our material is hard when you walk on it, but it's soft when you fall on it. We sell it as flooring and mat. And this is the actual uh, product. And it does not dent even if you step on it like this. But if you fall then, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> hey. Yeah, this, this is our, our special product. Thank you. All right. I think you're still under time. No more demonstrations. You're good. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So on the one side, okay, there is our balance. On the one side, you bravely shown us your, your damaged hippocampus. And then the other side, you're willing to take a fall to try and win, get in the ring, a heavy class. Okay, we've got some heavy contenders tonight. Okay, this is really, really interesting. Again, two fantastic products, okay? This is gonna be another tough one for our judges, okay? Hiroshi, I'm gonna stick with you to hear about the team. How, what, what team was it that developed this? Hard when you walk on it, but soft when you fall on it. Magic Shield, okay? Your team, ready, go! The strength of our team is that we have special engineers and physical therapists. I used to work for Yamaha Motor developing racing motorcycles. The motorcycles jumps over 100 meters and fall over. So we have special shock absorption technology. And my co-founder is a physical therapist. He has rehabilitated more than 20,000 patients. And we have 20 members, include five MBA holders. Include Okay, so you come from Yamaha with motorcycles and shock absorbing, as well as you've got a lot of MBA people to, to, to put it out. And you also have people that are working in uh, healthcare, physical therapy, with people that have fallen down. So he knows uh, how they fall and how they get injured and things like that. All right, all right, very good, okay. All right, coming back to you, Akita, to tell us about this amazing team at Cogsmart. You've got 30 seconds. Ready? Go! Our greatest strength is that we have a unified team with Tohoku University. Professor Taki is the co-founder and representative director. His lab includes a variety of researchers to conquer dementia from medical to physical therapists and AI data scientists. They are involved in Cogsmart project. It is a very rare case that the university professor works as a representative director of a startup, showing how serious he is. The fact that the researcher team at the Taki Laboratory work closely with Cogsmart project teams is a unique strength. Okay, so you have a, a lot of scientists as well as doctors and university people that are working on the hippocampus, okay? All right, yes. okay. And, and, and they, have, they have a better hippocampus than, than you, I take it, what you're saying. Hopefully, you all get tested. All right, good, okay. Akin, I'm gonna stay with you to find out about the achievements. What has Cogsmart been able to achieve up till now, okay? You have 30 seconds, go. So we have got 40 medical institutions, clients, including prestigious university hospitals. By the end of this year, the number is expected to exceed 100. But you may think if you always need MRI images for analysis, it's not handy and the business may not scale out, especially abroad. So we are developing another service called BrainNet. So mobile type services, thanks to the governmental grants from Japan and Hong Kong as well. So we will start clinical trial from this spring, which should be the first case in this area, I hope. Okay, right on the bell there. So you already have your product being used by 40 hospitals, hopefully 100 soon. And for working abroad, you're coming up with an app as well. You have an app to help increase your hippocampus, correct? 
<laughs> all right, <laughs> great, okay, all right. Coming to Hiroshi, tell me about the achievements that Magic Shields has been able to do. You have 30 seconds. Ready, go! So far in Japan, it has been used in more than 400 hospitals and nursing homes. And there have been no serious fractures in over two years of use, no fractures. The sales are about $100,000 per month and increasing every month. We work with several medical universities and large architectural companies. Thank you. Okay, way under the 30 seconds. There's the bell. Okay, so already in over 400, univer or 400 hospitals is being used. And in the past two years, nobody that's fallen down has gotten hurt. That's, that's very impressive, that's very impressive, okay? All right, I'm gonna stay with you, uh, Hiroshi, to hear about the business model and market. Where do you see Magic Shields going, okay? 30 seconds to tell us about this. Ready, go! We have sold it to hospitals and nursing homes. The business model is to sell repeatedly to them. It usually starts with the sale of a single mat or a single room. Then it is purchased repeatedly and all the floors of that building will be our floors. This spring, we will begin selling to the homes. The global market size is over $60 billion. Thank you. Okay, right on the bell. So you start off by having a hospital do a room and they see how, how useful it is and how nobody's getting hurt. Then they can start doing the rest of the, the floors. And you're also looking at normal homes. And there are a lot of floor space in the world, is what you're saying. All right, very good, very good. Okay, coming back to you, Akira. Tell us about the business model and market for CogSmart. Ready, go! So as I said, we have two products. So our first product, BrainSeat, uses AI to analyze MRI images of brain health checkups at hospitals to do the screening for dementia risk. However, many asked, what's the point of just screening? It's no way if you cannot do further solution. So we are having this brain apps, mobile health solutions to promote lifestyle improvements and further to cure early dementia. So this may be called as a DDX. So with brain seat and brain app, we can create an ecosystem for dementia prevention from screening to solutions. Okay, so you start off with the MRI looking at the size of the hippocampus and saying, hey, there's a, there might be a problem here. You might have dementia in your future. And so you have the brain app then that is able to help with this. And then once they use that, they can come back and get retested to see how they grow. So you have a circular economy there. All right, all right, very interesting. All right, I'm gonna stick with you, Akira, to hear about the financials and proposition. What do you need at CogSmart? Ready, go! We aim at IPO in 2026 to go global further, when we expect to get the revenue of the brain seat around 40 billion US dollars. We also aim at medical device approval for brain app to treat dementia. So in order to scale out the brain seat in December 2021, so we complete the Series A funding of 2.7 million US dollars. In early 2024, next year, we will do the Series B funding, where we expect to raise 8 million US dollars, mainly for the clinical trials. Based on those fundings, we expect to achieve our milestones one by one. Okay, so you already have done your Series A, you're looking at a Series B and raising even more money, 8 million or $8 million, okay, coming up, and creating a much, much larger market for R&D and including uh, to start going more global, okay? Exactly. All right, Hiroshi, coming back to you. Financials and propositions of Magic Shields. Ready, go! We are launching a new product in the spring. So we need to pay for production and promotion. We are now raising $200 million for this. We are aiming for $200 million sales in five years. And then we will IPO with the variation of $100 billion or more. And we need a global medical and care network. Thank you. Okay. Way under 30 seconds again. So again, you have already created, you have a new product coming out this spring. Okay, and you're looking at $200 billion in sales, you're saying? A huge market, okay? And again, there's a lot of floor space out there. All right, wow. Two very, very, sounds like companies that are gonna be successful in the future. Both, as I think I heard the word IPO in the near future, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stick with you, Hiroshi, here for the freestyle, our fifth round to wrap it up, okay? You've got 30 seconds to tell us about Magic Shields. Ready, go! We are changing floors all over the world. It, just as there are hand raised and seat, seat belts all over the world. 
And in fact, one in three seniors bought. You and your family will surely fall in the future. But don't worry, we will protect you. Thank you. All right. Waiting for the bell to wrap it up here. Anything else gonna fall down once? No, okay, all right. No time to fall down on the mat again. All right, so again, people fall down a lot. And as they get older, there's gonna be more and more people falling down. But don't worry, magic shields will protect you from getting injured. All right, that's a really, really good tagline there. Okay, Akita, coming back to you. 30 seconds freestyle to wrap up. Tell us about CogSmart. Ready, go. Yeah, thank you. So I'm quite impressed by its magic shields. Actually, so one hour ago, I saw the PR Times that Magic Shield have the more than 2,800 hospital clients, and now Hiroshi says 400. But definitely, we will have the prospect to scale out the business because our business strategy is to get on the existing markets with software. Brain Seed is getting on the brain health checkers markets. Brain Up utilizes preparing smartphones and wearable devices. Definitely, so we can skyrocket to the global. Okay, all right. So you're throwing out some kudos to, uh, to Magic Shield. You like the products, but you still think that the brain also, you, you've got a larger market and with an app, you're going to be able to reach a lot more people and help them out. Okay, let's get a big round of applause for our two heavyweight contestants here. Wow, two fantastic companies, okay? This is going to be really, really hard on our judges, but to help them out, let's have some question and answer. Okay. Brian, Kanako, Haruka, what do you want to know more? Can I have a question? Okay, Haruka? Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a question for you each. Yes, this is very difficult. Yeah, okay. But, uh, for CogSmart, uh, have you ever talked with some uh, your future, possible future collaborator at right, medical device company? And what was, your, what was the reaction of the company? Okay, this is for both? Uh, this is for Coxmouth. Okay. And, for, mm -hmm. Yes. And another question for Magic Sears is, yes, I think, yes, the first is what was, what is the material and what is the composition? And yes, I, I understand that your business, in your business, the essential point of your business is that the technology is protected by the patent appropriately. So does your does your claims of your patent have a sentence that can be objectively verified whether or not your com your competitor infringes your patent when your competitor has made a similar product about oh. your patent? Okay, all right, okay. So start off with Akira and CogSmart, okay? Okay. So yeah, thank you very much for the question. So we have the so business agreement with the Philips, Japan. And we, so if, so after the successful, so how to say, my sales in Japan, so Philips expects to so provide these services to the global. In addition, so we also have our so collaborative business agreement with the Middle East trading company. So today was it the end of the Arab Health 2023, which is one of the biggest medical device exhibitions. So we, so our members went to the, is now in the so Arab Health to get the so new clients in the Middle East and North Africa areas. So this is our strategy and what we are doing. Thank you. Okay, so it's being well received then I take, is that what you're saying? Oh, very, sorry, could you? Uh, it's being very well received around the world. As uh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you okay. All right, okay, okay. All right, and then coming back, okay. So Hiroshi talking about uh, the material components, which uh, as much as you can say, and how can you uh, guard against people producing something similar? Yes, um, we applied for five patents of our product, and it, we, we think it is difficult to break the patent. And, and also, we have many medical evidence. We have medical proof has been provided. And we have also published medical un universities and international papers. So we already talked with the Stanford Medical Center and the hospital of Lille University in France. So the, the, that is the moat. Okay, so you have a lot of universities that you work with in hospitals, and plus you have five, did you say five patents already? To, uh, to hold against um, anybody else that tries to infringe upon and create a similar product. Okay, all right. Kanako, Brian, questions that you might have? Um, sure, I'll go next. 
Um, so I have a uh, same question for both companies. Um, I would like to know more about the customer acquisition plan, um, especially for um, the blue side. Um, I think it is inevitable to reach out to um, like people in their 50s to start thinking about um, this problem in order to prevent um, Alzheimer's or um, dementia from um, pro progressing. So like, how are you planning to reach out to these like people and how are you planning to acquire them? Okay, so how are you creating a larger market? Okay, let's start off with Cogsmart with Akira. Oh, okay, so thank you very much. Um, maybe a bit complicated, but so we are now sending the brain seed to the hospitals. So we expect to get the 300 clients in three years. And also we are now also developing the brain app for the other DTX. And after getting the medical device approval, so we are thinking to so distribute this app to the hospitals. Of course, we are now doing the, so we are preparing the clinical trials for it. So first we are now so getting the hospital clients one by one via the brain seat. And also after getting the medical device, so we distribute the brain up towards first towards our uh, clients. And then I hope so this would be so distributed to other hospitals as well. Sorry, I have a follow-up question on that. Um, so what triggers the hospital to actually um, provide the service to the patient? Is this some kind of like symptom or will it be the, on the patient's side to say, oh, I want a brain checkup? Okay, thank you very much. So my answer may have been quite vague. So brain up medical device, it should be a DTX to cure the symptoms of the Alzheimer's diseases or other dementia. So we hope that this would be so covered by the national insurance policy. And currently, as you know, so there is no fundamental therapy or so drug for the Alzheimer's diseases or other dementia. So I hope this would support to cure or prevent the progress of the dementia with the social national insurance, I hope. And this would be based on the how to say non-drug therapy, including the aerobic exercises, depending so based on the existing clinical studies, including by the Tokyo University. I think she was also asking about so do you reach out to a lot of hospitals to have them use your service or do they hear about you and reach out uh, to have the, the MRI AI that you use? I mean so Currently, we haven't yet reached out for the brain, but we are just having the clients of the brain seat. But so some hospitals have the both of the, so I mean, so not only the brain health breakfast, but also the so neuro surgery and also so the department for the dementia. So we hope so one by one, so we can, so how to say, the clients will, the client hospital will use the brain up after, after so getting the medical device approval. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so coming over to Hiroshi with Magic Shields, how are you acquiring a much larger market? Um, first step is the uh, big hospitals. We, we have uh, already some big hospitals and they introduce our uh, products to the next hospital. And, and also we have the big group of nursing homes. One is the biggest group, uh, its name is the Sonpo Group in Japan. And, and they have a, a lot, a lot, um, very, very um, many numbers of uh, nursing homes. So we can easily to spread the product. And we all already use the distributors. It is for the hospitals and architecture uh, remodeling. Now after that, in the future, uh, we can use a TV shopping to the homes. Okay, all right. So first of all, you start off with large hospitals and they introduce other hospitals. You also have a group of, of nursing homes that you work with through Sompo. And then you're looking at also doing maybe, once you get into real homes, then using TV shopping to help people move the word more. Okay, all right. Uh, does that answer your questions, Haruka? Oh, sorry, Kanako? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. And Brian, some questions that you might have. Yes, I have one question each for Coxsmart and also Magic Shields. Uh, for Coxsmart, my question is around 
uh, your charging model. I think as you mentioned uh, to Kanako as well, you hope to reimburse by the national insurance scheme. But how much do you charge the patients and do you operate on like a lifetime value model? Because I assume that they will need to slow down their dementia over the uh, the rest of their lives, right? So it would be good if you could understand a bit, uh, if you could explain a bit more about that. And for Magic Shields, um, I just want to make sure I got my numbers correct. You mentioned that you are currently already making uh, $100,000 in revenue per month, and then you are targeting 200 million in sales, and you are going for a 100 billion IPO. So just want to double check on my numbers there um, quickly. Okay, all right, let's start off with Akira over in CogSmart. Okay, how are you actually the, the revenue model? Okay, thank you very much, Brian. So this is very, very difficult questions. Thank you very much. So currently, so as to the DDX, so there is a lot of the discussion on how much price would be good for the national insurance policy. So the existing so QR apps, so hypertension, so QR support program gets, uh, sorry, 830 points. This would mean the JPY. So 8,000 30 times so the pre prescriptions so um it seems that so this kind of the point would be applicable to other dtx but so this would change for the next two or three years but i'd like to emphasize that our business model is between the healthcare and medical areas but by giving the prevention or sometimes so give the slow down the symptoms so our model is to get the revenues from the brain health checkups market and also so get the clients via the insurance companies or other so health sorry via the companies who would like to seek for the social benefits or so having the unions for the health insurance by distributing the brain up as a health care. So may maybe difficult to imagine, but mm. so what we are doing is what the other DTX companies are doing. So giving the healthcare product and also the SMD product as well. Okay, so you so, got both in the hospitals as well as uh, an app that can then go out into the larger public. So you've got two yes. forms of revenue coming in. Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, and okay, coming back to you then, Hiroshi. Brian's checking your numbers. He just wants to make sure you're just not throwing numbers up on the wall there. Okay, so and the sales are about. One hundred thousand dollars per month, and, and increasingly every month. And the, uh, we are aiming for two hundred million dollars sales in five years, and and then we will IPO with a valuation of one billion dollars or more. Okay, Brian, yeah, does that that sounds things about up for right? Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's all helpful. right. Thank you. Okay, great, okay. Let's give a big round of applause for our two heavyweight contestants here again and give our judges some time to think. Yay, okay, all right. Wow, this is gonna be another very, very tough one. Two really, really good companies, okay? And it seems that both of you are working towards an elderly market, so people that are getting older, whether they're falling down with uh, protecting them with magic shields or or helping them with you know either dementia or um, and, and increasing their brain uh, capacity. Um, a, real, a quick question for you, uh, Akira. So the app that you have, how long do you need to use that? Or is you use it every day or do you use it multiple times a day? Uh, what types of things have you found out uh, through the use of that to increase the hippocampus? We expect so you to use so more than three months or so better if it would be the more than six months based on the existing clinical studies. Okay. And so, use it every day for, for how long? Do you use it for like five minutes or 10 minutes, an hour? Or? Two times or three times a week. So in total, 120 or 150 minutes with a, a bit so, how to say, high heart rate, exos, aerobic exercises mm. is good. So this is now evidenced by a lot of the clinical studies. Oh, okay. So it, it actually is an app that actually gets you to move as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So it's through exercise as well. And if you're exercising and you're worried about falling down, I think that there's a great product that uh, with Magic Shields, okay? So Hiroshi, you talked about putting this into homes. So you're working with architects and builders as well to, um, people can have this put into their home if they're building it for like uh, a house that's gonna have three generations and things like that? Uh, yes, it, it is good case to use. Uh, actually, we provide the uh, babies and elder people. 
and and if if you want to fitness in your home, our, our product is good for that. Oh, okay, okay. So it can be used for fitness as well. So if you have a weight room, for example, you could put the floor the mats down, and if you drop weights, they're not going to make. Does it? It lessens the sound and the vibrations yeah. as well. Okay, all right, all right, good. So again, two really really interesting products here. Okay, let's come back to our judges and see who's going to win our. Heavyweight competition for our Osaka Get in the Ring 2023. We're going to start off our voting with Haruka this time, okay? Haruka, do you have your vote ready? Yes, I have. <laughs> okay. Who do you pick for our winner for our final round of this evening? Yes, I vote for Red. For Magic Shields, okay. One vote for Magic Shields, all right. And what influenced this decision? Yes, first. I would like to reach out to Cogsmart. I would, I, would, I would also like to vote for Cogsmart, but I do interest in your company since I have been working with a pharmaceutical company who are developing drugs, developing drugs for dementia or some disease, and also uh, have worked with some startups who are developing DDX or supportive device for diagnose, diagnosing dementia. So, but uh, I cho why I chose uh, Madex there is that the the company has a really good sales track record and the market is very big, can expand the market. This is not only healthcare and elderly market, but also I think this could be used for pregnant women at, at, at maternity hospital or and also could be used at the construction site to reduce the damage when workers fell off from higher price. Uh, so yes, this is a pride to uh, very big market. That's why I chose Magic Shield. Okay, all right, thank you. So she's choosing Magic Shields. All right, yes, congratulations. But she still gave a reach out to do some business with you, Akita. So do keep in touch, all right? Okay, it sounds like she's working with some interesting pharmaceutical companies. All right, one vote here for Magic Shields, okay? Next, Brian, do you have your vote ready? Yes, I have my vote. Okay, who is your vote for our heavyweight round? My vote is for Magic Shields. Magic Shields, okay, all right. And what influenced your decision in this way? I think similar to Haruka-san, um, traction is very, very strong. Uh, and and as, as Haruka-san mentioned as well, um, it's essentially a flooring replacement, right? Which I think is very, very interesting. And it goes beyond uh, health tech benefits as well. Um, besides that, I do want to also give a shout out to uh, Akira San from Copsmart. I think um, the combination of digital therapeutics and then uh, potentially using hospitals as your sales channels is actually um, very, very smart and very creative. And I think there's a uh, huge potential there. So thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. So that's two votes we have now for Magic Shields. Okay, so again, we've got our third judge, Kanago. Do you have your vote ready? Uh, yes. No pressure now? Again? Mm -hmm. Okay, no pressure. Who do you think should be our winner for our heavyweight class? My vote is... Red. Red, another third vote for Magic Shield across the board. Okay, congratulations! Let's give a round of applause for okay, Hiroshi. All right, all right, all right. And, and what made you choose Magic Shield? Why did you think that way? Um, so both companies had amazing amazing achievements and it would definitely make a tremendous impact to the world. Um, I chose Magic Shield because um, I thought the their product is um, easier to implement and easier for the customers to um, buy. Um, and the customer acquisition plan was very clear. Um, so I could like easily imagine them um, creating uh, generating revenue. Um, I also really like the analogy of seatbelt. Um, so, um, yes, I cheer for both companies. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Okay, another big round of applause for Hiroshi at Magic Shields. Yay! And a lot of shout outs as well to Akira at CogSmart. So, two amazing companies, okay? Thank you both very much. So, Hiroshi, how do you feel? Um, thank you so much. I'm very happy. And, and this time I, I will go abroad and uh, I want to know 
I, I want to show the product to the uh, everyone in the world, and I, I will protect the every ball. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Not only does he have the mats to fall on, he has the bones to, to save as well. Okay. All right. Another big round of applause for our two heavyweight contestants. Yay. All right. Great. Wow. So many fantastic companies. So many new technologies coming out into the field of health tech. We hope that you've had a lot of fun learning about these companies. Okay. Check them out. There's lots and lots going on in their future. Okay. Now. These fantastic battles, fantastic companies. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed being here at Get in the Ring Osaka 2023. So many fantastic battles, so many fantastic companies. Now, we do have some awards from our partners. Our first one, the Fujitsu Accelerate Award goes to da -da 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 Cogsmart. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, and now we have our EY Japan Award, and this has several different classes. The light class goes to Smart Tissue. Congratulations. Our middleweight goes to Liquid Mind. Congratulations. Our heavy class goes to Magic Shields. Congratulations, another win for you over there. And there's another prize going to Fukuro, which was one of our contestants, they didn't make it to the final round, but they still got an award here, the EY Japan Award. Congratulations! Also, there is our PRX, our PR Times Award, which is going to be six months. They will get one free news announcement every month for six months. So this will help get the word out about your company to the rest of the world, okay? Congratulations to everyone receiving that one. Now, we'd like to thank again all of our fantastic sponsors and partners for making tonight's Get in the Ring possible. We'd like to space, say special thanks to AstraZeneca, <laughs> EY Japan, Fujitsu Accelerator, and of course, our host for this evening was the Osaka Innovation Hub. Big round of applause for them. Wow, man, it really was a great show, and I thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out many, many other Get In The Ring videos that are out there on YouTube. Almost all of the Get In The Ring Osaka videos are there, plus Get In The Ring videos from Get In The Ring events all over the world. Be sure to check them out. And also make sure that you check out the finals next year. From all of us here, we hope you have a great 2023, and hope we see maybe you next time getting in the ring. Thank you very much. Goodbye.